Our next speaker is uh, Tara Scherner de la Fuente. And she's happy that I said her name. Um, and down in the break room uh, for the speakers, we were talking about uh, just random stuff. And there were these like cupcakes and there was red velvet. And she and I had this kindred spirit because we kind of think that red cupcakes are a lie, right? Because it, it's not really, you know that, right? It's like actually chocolate with a lot of food coloring and cream cheese frosting. You didn't know that? Well, it's true. They're a lie. And we agree. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Am I mic'd up? I am. Woohoo! All right. Um, hey, everyone. My name is, in fact, Tara Scherner de la Fuente, and uh, my talk today is Oops, I Became an Engineer. And uh, so we better find out how that happened. Uh, like many of you in the room, I started with a lifelong love of reading, and then that uh, translated to writing. And um, I took kind of a long, winding path to my bachelor's degree, uh, which is from Emerson College in Boston, uh, where I majored woo uh, where I majored in writing, literature, and publishing. And uh, during that winding path, I had my first degree, um, and um, I uh, worked as a human resources recruiter, uh, first for a pharmaceutical wholesaler, and then for the Boston Symphony Orchestra. And uh, it was cool. And uh, during that time, one of my technical recruiter colleagues uh, suggested to me that I might have the aptitude uh, to be a good technical writer. And I kind of filed that away, but in the meantime, I went on to the University of Cincinnati where I uh, studied uh, for my master's and PhD in English. And uh, as part of that, I got to teach, which was awesome. I love teaching. I uh, taught composition, literature, and business writing. And uh, not slide decks, but apparently I'm done all right. And um, at that point, but then uh, kind of a career move called, and I became an assistant dean, if you can imagine such a thing, at another university in Ohio. And that turned out to be a really toxic environment. Uh, we can drink later and share stories if you like. Um, okay, now we have to make a leap in logic and you ha just have to trust me that this made sense then and it makes sense now. I made a career goal, which was that I did not want any job where I could not wear jeans and t-shirts every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> Whew. Spoiler alert, it totally worked out. Um, so, uh, where was I going to do that, and how was that going to happen? My first thought is tech. I'd heard about fun offices, relaxed dress code environment, and uh, so that's, that's what I thought I would do. And, uh, you know, I certainly wasn't going to be a computer engineer. I really love theme shirts, FYI. Um, and so how was I going to get in there? Well, I remembered the technical recruiter's suggestion that maybe I could get into technical writing. Uh, by the way, thank you, Sarah, for letting me use this slide. Um, I, had, I had technical writing on my resume, but I'd really just done professional writing. I'd written some human resources procedure manuals, uh, some contracts, I'd done some specialized reports, and um, I'd edited an academic book and some different things like that. But I didn't feel like I would have the ability to actually do the job in actual tech where I could wear the jeans and the t-shirt. Um, and I certainly didn't think I would get in for an interview if I didn't have some kind of skills that, to put on my resume. So I went uh, to, you may have picked up that I really like formal education, so I went to a community college and I took, uh, I did one semester of some certificate program where I learned database foundations, systems analysis, and C Sharp. And I chose this slide specifically because when I took C Sharp, I didn't know how to say it. I thought it might be C pound, C hashtag. <laughs> so if nothing else, here's a takeaway. You say it C Sharp. So I uh, learned some of that, and in that class, I learned about these things called coding boot camps, where you could um, go for a number of weeks and you could just intensively learn how to code. And I thought, okay, well, that will prepare me to talk to the subject matter experts, the engineers, and, and I'll have this thing to put on my resume. And, um, oh, that's me, right over there. Um, so, uh, over there, I learned... Yeah, I learned CSS, HTML, JavaScript, Ruby on Rails, and I kind of felt like this rabbit the whole time. Um, and to be fair, I still feel like this rabbit 
all the time. Um, but I like it now uh, because I like learning hard things, which is a little bit um, what this talk is about. Um, in any case, I was wrapping up a coding boot camp and I had done a bunch of interviews and I was kind of up really though for two jobs, technical writer at Puppet Labs or junior engineer at Living Social. It was gonna be one of those, and Living Social came through, and oops, I became an engineer. Um, I, here, I, here I was, having done all of my education up until that boot camp and kind of the community college as an English major, um, but oops, I became an engineer. Okay, now for the weak part of the talk, which includes an apology. Apologies are never good when you're on stage, but, I am going to apologize that I do not have enough time to apologize on behalf of all the developers to all of the technical writers, but I am very sorry. I just can't be, I don't have time for specifics. Um, but I also learned that, um, that there are, originally I was gonna focus on specific problems between communication and working with um, developers and uh, docu document folks, um, but I decided uh, that that would be irrelevant to part of the room no matter what I chose because y'all have different problems and, and it comes as no surprise after reading lots of literature including Shakespeare ugh, uh, that, um, that there are more than one solution to every single one of your problems. So I am happy to talk with you one-on-one -on -one about solving some of those if you think I can offer some advice but in the meantime I will just uh, suggest a couple of uh, ways to improve communication. Uh, so hopefully you are working with people who want to do their best. You want to do their best, your best, um, the developer wants to do their best, and so you need that just, just to get started. Um, so if you've got the goals to improve communication with the people involved, then that's, that's key. You've got to work on that, and then you want to improve the content communication as well. And your various problems in wherever you're doing your, your jobs probably vary between uh, those key things. Okay, wait, now I, have, I actually do have to apologize again because there's gonna be two tangents, but at least I can number them, so that's helpful. So the first tangent is um, when I was working at Living Social, when colleagues would say to me, um, that they'd been promoted to management. I would send them a congratulations note, usually in Slack, and then I would send them this picture. And they, they're like, Tara, what, um, what is going on? I'm like, you are in management. Welcome, here is your box of meetings. Um, so, I, again, I was an assistant dean. I am well versed in the fun box of death. Uh, so yeah, I do not want to go into management ever again. But here's, here's the thing. I hate meetings and most developers hate meetings. And so one of the first things you can do, okay, tangent number two now, is, is you, I, th I found when I was teaching composition that most students, whether they could barely write themselves out of a paper bag or they were pretty strong writers, really only had two to three things. To, it's that 80-20 problem, right? Two to three things and their writing would improve by 80%. It could be something global, it could be one, one comma rule, but two to three things, if they just do that, things would be so much better. So my tip right now is that you find those two to three things and communicate that if you're doing one-on-one, -on -one, you're doing a workshop, you're doing a whole, department thing, that you find those two to three things and you limit that scope and tell the developers that you are limiting your scope to these two to three things. And if they get those two to three things down, they may not have to come to a meeting with you ever again. And they'll be more likely to want to come to a meeting with you, is the, is the idea here. Um, but, uh, or that meetings with you, they will see that you respect that you hate meetings and, um, and, or that you are willing to acknowledge that they hate meetings and you'll keep them out of them. So um, don't give your developers fun boxes of death that are too long without a limited uh, emphasis and they will be more likely uh, to want to meet with you. <laughs> okay, so now back to learning software development and other hard stuff. Okay, so... Yeah, I, no, I, I was told to like move fast past that slide because uh, reasons, but it'll be available online. Okay, so um, first, 
Know that you can learn hard things, whether it's development or something else, but you can learn hard things. Remember that I was a word chick thinking I could not be a computer engineer. Heck, it didn't even occur to me that I could be a computer engineer. I didn't even think could I or couldn't I. I just, that was not in the spectrum. So you at least think, maybe you're hearing if you've even been remotely interested in getting into de development, you can learn it. You've already learned incredibly hard things. And uh, so you can get in there, but a good tip, and maybe you already know this, but maybe we all need reminders, is expect failure and set up, just like limited scope for meetings, set up a limited scope for how many times you will expect failure. And that could be nine times, like nine times I expect to not get this development concept or I expect not to understand what this is in JavaScript, which believe me, you will not be alone. Um, and, but, but give it 10 times before you say, you know what, I just don't get it. Set yourself up something, gazoon tight, and and really expect to fail and, uh, and give yourself an opportunity. And each time you fail, try a different way of learning the hard thing because it's called learning hard things because it's very hard. Um, so development is not unlike getting a degree in English. Uh, software languages are called languages for a reason, but you've already learned like the hardest language. English, oh my gosh, the grammar, the rules, the syntax, what is up with so much of that? I don't know. But you've already learned that, so I know each of you can learn hard things if you are so inclined. Moreover, if you've been a reader, you have learned some critical thinking. So you can totally do this. Um, now, uh, both literature and writing have narratives. <laughs> you should follow that account. You should totally follow that account. Um, and most programming begins or should begin with a user story. So uh, you'll continue to write the content for these stories. Uh, writing fun and good comments is so much fun. You will find that you're writing fiction in places that where it's really nonfiction, but it's narrative and it's awesome. And finding fun comments in code is great. You'll have this whole new world opened up to you if you're a creative writer. Um, Anyway, there are lots of great things about being in computer development once you have been in English and writing and literature and all that. So how do you get in on this? Um, as you know, I went with community college, but the key is remember, your goal is to expect failure. So you wanna do that as cheaply as possible. <laughs> community college is one of those options. Um, YouTube videos are great, they're free, they're online. I wouldn't recommend that as your first starting point, but if you're looking for some enthusiasm, there are some good ones out there. Uh, Codecademy is online and it's free and you can uh, start typing and learning all kinds of new languages, uh, software languages, and uh, that's a great way to get going. There are a couple of similar options. Team Treehouse is right here in Portland, although it's online. Code School Online, both of them have free courses you can take to see if one of them suits you, and then monthly memberships that you can, um, you can join if if that works for you. I actually belong to both of those. And then there's another one that a lot of software engineers use called lynda.com. If you have a membership to a library, a lot of libraries will actually give you access to lynda.com for free. Otherwise, it, I think it's about $200 a year, uh, but it's kind of worth it. Now, if you can swing it, and there's a lot of privilege involved in being able to do it, but I think in-person boot camps are a great option for learning code, because mostly because of the networking and the contacts you can make as part of that. I also think I got a lot of the interviews that I uh, received because I had Epicodus on my resume. Um, but there is that privilege. There's price ranges all the way from zero, but we take a big chunk of your money the first year, um, all the way to several thousand dollars. So that's privilege. Being able to house and feed yourself during that time is privilege. Um, and those are things to consider. But there are so many different options for learning, development, or other hard things. Books, online, in-person, full-time, part-time, with a friend, self-motivation, which, by the way, Epicodus has their entire curriculum, the whole shebang, what we actually used in the class, it's online for free at learnhowtoprogram.com. And so if you're a self-motivated sort of a person, you could do that. Um, but in any case, I think what's important is that you learn what helps you learn 
the hard things. And if one doesn't work, then try a different one. Um, but learn, learn, find what helps you learn those things and expect to fail and try something different if the first one doesn't work. But no matter what, if technical writing is not your passion, find something that amazes you that you can get paid for. Uh, but development does pay really well, better than an assistant dean, honestly. And I get to dress in jeans and t-shirts. But so it's, it's a great option if you've even considered it, not just because of the money, but because I solve puzzles for a living and they pay me. Um, I also really like bad Photoshop, and so that's my laptop, you might notice. Look at that, Britney Spears has my laptop. Um, <laughs> So anyway, uh, you can uh, follow me at Media Remedial uh, on Twitter, or my alter ego is a goat, and you can find me at Goat User Stories. Thank you very much, everyone.